you know, rightfully so, they, they people sh did step up for Ukrainians. That that's our our obligation and duty. At the same time, the responses that we're getting from in my office and from across Canada now are they're seeing a, a bias between the two. And Canada should, used to be a beacon of hope. Canada was a leader. And it should continue to do that. It should be a leader when it comes to helping those that are being persecuted around the world. And we hear stories all the time that there's, you know, resources that should be used across the board evenly. And right now it's because of the mismanagement under this liberal government in immigration. We've never seen this many backlogs in the history of Canada. And it's causing many, many hardships to all sorts of people that are trying to come to Canada. And the government needs to step up and not forget the people of Afghanistan. Closing this program is more proof. First, when they should have been doing an evacuation plan last year, the prime minister was busy doing an election plan. So he failed on that part. And now we're seeing the same failure again, that it feels like they're abandoning those that served Canada. As an Afghan, I'm 43 years old, and all my 43 years have been in war. I really feel the Ukrainian peoples, they do deserve to be helped in any way that it's possible. I wish I could do something to help them. But this does not mean that that should be done at, at expense of Afghan people. This that does not mean that Afghan people should, should be abandoned. And the way that we see it, I think numbers are really telling that, right? The way that Ukrainians are helped, that's great. Keep on doing that. But at the same time, we need to help at the same speed, at the same rate, all those Afghans that they are in danger right now just because of their services to the Canadian mission in Afghanistan. I'm in touch with my people, like the group who is working with me at Shajan and Associates. Canada, Embassy of Canada's lawyers in Afghanistan, as well as many, many other lawyers, human rights activists, a lot of them, they have not received any response from the IRCC for the past 11 months, from the time that they have submitted application. No response at all, apart from that automated reply that they would get. We are not talking about a routine immigration system where someone is trying to bring a family member to Canada, and you can wait, the person is somewhere safe, let's say, in India, in Pakistan, or other countries of the world, right? They're just waiting for that family member to be reunited. We're talking about people who are at risk right now just because of the services they provided to the Canadian mission in Afghanistan. And it really needs to change now.